A lot of people come here and they don't want to leave. You know when you when you have friends over and and you you're having a party and and you're like, okay, I need to go to bed, you know, and it, it's really touching for us because I feel like, oh my god, they really love it here, you know, and and we love it here, but you know, after a while, you're like, it's, I want to go to bed. <laughs> so so uh, people come and they they're just always like, oh wow, it, it's so it's magical, or they're always just relaxed at the same time, you know, it's not, I keep it easy. I'm Mario Navera. I'm a landscape architect, and welcome to my home in East Hampton. The house is laid out, it's, a, it's an old Cape Cod house, which is unusual actually for, uh, you know, the Hamptons but it, it was it's the 1940s house, so it's an imitation of a Cape Cod house. It's it's only a third of an acre, and I wanted to feel expansive. We, we put a hedge up because we're across the street from a cemetery, which actually has turned out to be the most amazing thing because the cemetery has beautiful trees and you know it's really quiet and it's just beautiful. And we had to hedge the whole property in, and then there's a lot of French touches. There is a living room. It's more like a great room. It's a living room and dining room. It has an open ceiling. Down the hallway, there is a big guest room with a bathroom, and then there's a small guest room with a hallway bathroom. And then there's the kitchen, and then beyond that, beyond the kitchen, there's a little laundry room and then our bedroom. Upstairs, there's this beautiful little loft office sitting room bedroom. It's really, really, really lovely. It's a dormer room, you know. As a kid, you always wanted a dormer room, you know, with the little windows and a cove ceiling. It's pretty cool. Uh, we've only been in the house for eight years. Um, and every day here is really quite special. I think that I'm here every day and or when we are here, we enjoy it. And I'm just happy that Travis loves it. When you leave the house, on the back side of the house, there's this beautiful porch that the previous owner put on. And we changed it a little. We got rid of the railings that used to be there and I extended the steps all the way across the porch. When when you walk into a garden, you want to feel like you're in a, in a wonderful space. It just happens to be outside. But I, I don't want it to look like it was too composed, you know. I want it to feel like God's hand might have been just, it just touched magically, you know. Where we like to hang out uh, most in the house is I would say our new bedroom, because it's big and it has a couch and a, and a chair, so we, we can hang out there. It has a beautiful view of the gardens because uh, we added more windows and love the pool house. What's nice about the pool house is I like to sit in the shade. I mean, it doesn't look like I like to sit in the shade, but I'm outside a lot for my work. And so to sit in the shade for me is just like a dream, but he likes to sit in the sun. so. There's a, a sunny terrace right next to the pool house and, and it's literally like 10 feet distance. So you don't feel like we're separated. So that's a lot of fun for us. What do I love most about being in the Hamptons? Um, well, every day, pretty much, I'll go to the farm stand. And uh, I really love, you know, being able to get a lettuce or a squash or whatever's in season and then coming home and making something with it. Because cooking is very relaxing for me. It's a creative outlet and it's a challenge. Good friends of mine, you know, came and the wife will eat anything and the husband, he doesn't eat vegetables. But I'm like, we are gonna eat vegetables like nobody's business. <laughs> and so I made, the snap peas were out last week and squash is out. So I made a beautiful thing with squash and snap peas and he ate it. And then the second day, he said, well, can't we just have that again? How would I describe the style of my house? It is really a collection of everything we love and have found. There's a lot of sentimentality. You know, there's all the things have a, some kind of story. And sometimes I think, gosh, we have so much stuff, you know. Our Florida house is like white and clean. It looks like a museum. And this house says a lot of stuff in it. And I, I keep thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do with all this at some point? But then I love it.
Some of the collections I've built are old Long Island tourist maps of East End Long Island. But these maps were frozen in time maps and they were hand painted, you know, like it printed and then they would color in the print. So it's really, really beautiful. I have levels and um, I like tramp art, you know, um, I have a popsicle stick lamp and you know, those cork frames made out of old chopped up cork and uh, ashtrays made out of metal, you know, rebar <laughs> and things like that. I had a Marie Kondo moment and Travis is also really like that too. He's like, get rid of everything. If you don't love it, get rid of it. So he doesn't know anything about Marie Kondo, but he know that's what he does. So. <laughs> I love this house because it really is the quintessential connection between the inside and the outside. Most of my landscape architecture projects are rooted in the connection with the inside and the outside. Because I, I work in residential landscape architecture mostly, I try to set up the experience of the home. When you drive in or walk into a property, you are introduced to the home and the architecture. And so I want the garden and the landscape and the, and the environment to embrace that architecture and to complement it. And then they walk in and they catch the vibe of whoever lives there and you know, the personality of that, of the house. And then you start to get the chance to walk back outside, which most people do. Most homes are designed to be able to experience, to go back outside. And so it's that layering, that vista, and that, uh, that sort of moments and that the crescendo of it all, you know, the, you orchestrate all of that. Most people's emotional response to romance or their notion of romance, it's always outside or in the garden. I am inspired by Russell Page. I think his gardens and landscapes are most associated with the right amount of the balance of horticulture and architecture and, and romance that I really respond to. Out of every window, I want to make sure that you're looking at something really amazing, whether it's arranged and obvious, or if it's just roses or flowers or leaves, or just something that is something pretty to look at, and you wonder, can, do I have a chance to go outside? I mean, that's really what happens when you go visit your friends, right? You come in, you hang out, blah, blah, blah. Oh, let's go outside and hang outside. And you stop there. So that ending better be pretty good.